know, we had a team meeting and it was brought up some things that I could do better, especially like with buying into the program. And right now it's tough right now, but like I said, right now I'm taking a little back seat right now, trying my best to buy in right now. Just trying to be a team player and really buy into it. I'm trying my best to buy in. I'm sorry, but what is this? What kind of attitude are we hearing from a franchise superstar? In year five, Zion Williamson is supposed to be a leader, the captain of the ship, the $40 million man that can be counted on only. It is extremely clear that Zion has not bought into what the Pelicans are selling, and that is extremely concerning. The New Orleans Pelicans have bet it all on Zion. He is owed $48 million in 2028, and on top of this, individually, Zion Williamson has gone from a player we once saw as a generational prospect to a player, if he continues to go downhill, will go down as one of the biggest disappointments we've ever seen. Because it is a stone cold fact. The Pelicans as a team have been nothing but a disappointment since December 8th, 2022. As on December 8th, less than one year ago, the New Orleans Pelicans stood alone in first place in the Western Conference conference, as during that time period, Zion was seemingly unlocked again. During a win against the Phoenix Suns, there was Zion, trash talking in the Suns' faces, seemingly playing the role of a young star who could carry a team all the way to greatness. Everything was supposedly coming together, only everything crumbled in an instant. The drop-off has been massive. The Pelicans went from first in the West to not even making the playoffs after a play-in game loss, and individually, Zion has gone from averaging 27 points per game in his second season to 22.4 points per game in year five. And in terms of advanced efficiency, year five Zion compared to year two Zion has a worse PER, true shooting percentage, win shares per 48 minute, box score plus minus, and VORP. You get the point. This is a roster that proved in December of 2022 that they could fight for the Western Conference and at times Zion has proven himself to be a superstar at the highest level. So what exactly is the problem? Well, as it turns out, it's hard Hard to build a franchise when your superstar player behind the scenes is doing anything he can to leave, but on camera, plays the role perfectly of media ringmaster. So what's up guys, Mike here, and it's said you should never judge a person on their words, look at their actions instead. In the case of Zion this season, when the Pelicans win, he speaks very nicely. We've also heard this. <laughs> Luca, maybe more than any other player, has given given the Pelicans problems these last couple of years. Just what what makes him difficult to to stop? He's a special player. Yes, that is Zion still out of breath after his game against the Dallas Mavericks this year. That was less than two weeks ago. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. Because of course, as you already know, the NBA season has been crazy. We've already had some incredible buzzer beaters, some wild on the court moments. Yes, SeatGeek, the place where I personally buy my tickets. And luckily, SeatGeek is hooking us up. They're giving us a special deal where no matter what, if you're a new SeatGeek customer or not, you can use code Mike 10 for 10% off of any college or professional basketball game on SeatGeek. That's right. Code Mike 10 works no matter what. You could have bought a million tickets on SeatGeek before this. Mike 10 is going to get you 10% off your next basketball order. So take out your phone, open the SeatGeek app, add code Mike 10, get 10% off. This is a no brainer to me, but you are going to want to do it now because this offer is only available until November 30th. That is code Mike 10 for 10% off of your next basketball order. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. To pretend like Zion's weight issues or in shape issues are not currently a problem would be playing make-believe. Unfortunately, the proof is right in front of us. Side by side right here, we could see examples of Zion jumping when he was a rookie. On the right are examples of Zion jumping recently. In a world of dunks and athleticism, Zion still somehow stood out because he was something we had never seen before. When you take away this athleticism, we've already seen what has happened on the stat sheet. Only five players in NBA history history post-merger have averaged 27 points per game or more in their second seasons, and those names are Shaq, LeBron, Trey, Luka, and Zion. Out of those five, Zion beats out Shaq for best field goal percentage with 61% shooting. Zion in year two was the kind of player that would fit into any system. His year two self would have made any roster in the NBA better because year two Zion was not forcing anything. That is one of the biggest problems with year five Zion, because it's not as if he's been horrible. To be fair, Zion has been a 
near all-star with averages of close to 22 and a half points per game, six rebounds per game, and four and a half assists per game. If he did not have such high expectations, we might consider Zion a great player. The same could be said if he didn't have an attitude. This is where I'm going to introduce a possible conspiracy wrinkle theory into this, I guess. And that is, it appears that Zion wants to be traded to a big market still. Is that fair at all? No, not even close. But if we're looking at his actions and at the evidence, yes, we know that Zion has suffered from injuries. But that doesn't explain why he would show up to training camp over 300 pounds and need to be sent away to go lose that weight. It doesn't explain the weight clause that was added into his contract. It doesn't explain JJ Redick calling out the Pelicans front office and saying that they were clueless. It doesn't explain why Zion's recent summer was filled with baby mama drama instead of stories of him working on his three point jumper. I will say in reality, we are just left with two options. One, Zion's work ethic is simply not there. We have seen that before, certainly in recent memory. Players have that burn and desire to go out and reach their dreams. But when you're being paid at a max contract level, you better be working as hard as the other players around you. So is that what happened to Zion? Did he get that big contract and stop working? Or do things go even deeper? I'm going to present you here with just the facts and you can be the judge. As we know, Zion flew onto the scene as a megastar in high school and in college, and we all loved him. However, the second that the money became involved, strange reports began to come in. But here's what CBS reported after the draft lottery. Zion was, quote, quickly whisked out of the room after Pelicans were announced the winner of the draft lottery. Source said the former Duke star was rooting to go to New York, but now is going to New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, to me, he kind of looked like he'd been hit by a truck. When he woke up this morning, New Orleans was not what he was thinking. At this time, it was revealed that Zion's father is a lifelong Knicks fan, and Stephen A. Smith did everything he could to fuel the rumors that Zion wanted to go to New York. He would get drafted number one to the Pelicans, though, and then in the summer league, he would play nine minutes before he was shut down with knee problems, to which his college coach, Coach K, said, he's been on this circuit of the awards, the ESPYs, everything. I don't think he's in the playing shape or mental shape to play. This did lead to surgery to repair Zion's torn meniscus, and during this time, Zion was caught sleeping at the end of his bench. Eventually though, as a rookie, he would play, dominate, and in the bubble, he would have to leave with an urgent family matter, but who's to speak on that? What we continue to know for sure is Zion was a star in year two. However, after year two, we all expected Zion Williamson to take a leap and become a megastar. Only as training camp neared, a mysterious report emerged, Zion had suffered a foot injury during the off season and now was over 300 pounds. Let's just be real here. He is a professional athlete Athlete, he is paid to be an athlete. This was chalked up to youth, however, and at first Zion sat with the team as it was thought that he would lose the weight and quickly recover. However, after Zion continued to go viral with his warm-ups where it seemed like he was losing no weight at all, the Pelicans reported that Zion was taking a break to recover as he went to Oregon. It was also reported that no Pelicans team officials went with him, and instead he went with his own personal trainer. Q more Knicks conspiracies, Q more trade conspiracies, and also Q, CJ McCollum getting traded to the Pelicans and making national news when he publicly said this. I haven't had conversations with him directly. I've spoken to some people close to him and look forward to sitting down uh, with him sooner than later. Yes, Zion had not even spoken to him. Everyone gave Zion the pass for this, saying that there was no cell reception in Oregon. However, let's play that first Zion interview back again. You know, we had a team meeting and it was brought up some things that I could do better. And right now it's tough right now, but trying my best to buy it right now. It sounds like the Pelicans team leaders are doing everything they can to handle this internally. But then we have this offseason where again, Zion faced weight scrutiny and again, he made news with anything but basketball related activities. But in my opinion, is affecting his on-court play and attitude. And that's where I'll leave it. I think you have to have a certain fire in you to go from that. I've worked my way to this max contract mindset to I'm going to be an all-time NBA great mindset. On Zion's side, it seems like he lets anything stop him, while he's also held zero personal accountability. So at the end of the day, I do hope he figures it out. He is a young player, and he was one of the most exciting players we had ever seen. But I also think he would have to get a wake-up call, because I will say, with the attitude he's shown, that's nothing you'd want from a franchise superstar who is supposed to be your leader, at least in my opinion. Let me know yours down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cute.
that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.